Welcome to the Hearing Reviews webinar, How to Employ a Multi-Layered Marketing Approach with Dr. Jill Caseworm. I'm Carl Strum, editor of the Hearing Review magazine and its website at hearingreview.com. Today we have the first of three webinars brought to you courtesy of Care Credit, focusing on improving your marketing and practice management. This webinar looks at what Dr. Caseworm refers to as the multi-layered marketing approach to gaining more business. Our presenter is Dr. Jill Caseworm, AUD, who has been running her private practice, Professional Hearing Services in St. Joseph, Michigan, for over 30 years. Her office has been widely profiled in the hearing press, and she's written numerous articles for the Hearing Review, and I think many people in our industry often cite her business as a best practices example from a business and clinical standpoint. I consider Dr. Jill to be something of an audiologist expeditionary. She tries a lot of things in her practice, and she doesn't mind speaking plainly about those things that work, as well as those things that don't work so well. Today's presentation is brought to you by CareCredit, a health care credit card designed for patients' health, beauty, and wellness needs. It helps families access the care they need and want without delay or compromise. Approved patients with hearing problems can use it to pay for hearing tests, aids, and other preventive hearing devices they need to live their lives to the fullest. CareCredit is also offering at their 2015 IHS convention booth in Orlando a summary of Jill's presentations along with a special report and toolkit about the hearing industry and dispensing practice metrics. So if you're at IHS, be sure to stop by the CareCredit booth, that's booth 308, and pick these up. They'll also be offering a similar toolkit at the ADA convention in Washington, so stay tuned for that. As a matter of housekeeping in this webinar, you can email Jill and me questions via the Q&A box on the left or by using the email address shown at the end of this presentation. I'm also obligated to point out the standard ever-present legal disclaimer, which essentially says you are urged to consult with financial, legal, and other advisors relative to this content, and there's no implied liability for the use of the information provided. And with that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jill Caseworm to today's Hearing Review webinar. Jill? Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Carl. I always enjoy working with you and the great people at Care Credit. I'm going to talk today about a marketing approach that's been working very nicely in my practice and has been very successful at bringing in new patients. It's called multi-layered because we're using many different approaches all at once. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how you could employ multi-layered marketing into your practices, and I hope it will work as well for you as it has for me. Basically, when we talk about marketing, there's two different types of marketing. One is internal, which is marketing to your own patients, and the other is external, which is marketing to get new patients into your practice just to the general mass public. So I'm going to tell you some things about both. First, let's talk about external marketing. External marketing is using different mediums to attract the mass public that doesn't know about your business into your practice. So there are many ways to do that. What we've been using are TV, radio, social media, direct mail, and print. Those are just five forms of external marketing that you can use and many ways to use them, certainly. They can be expensive, so that's why I'm going to give you some tips on how to do this successfully. Care Credit has done some great research recently into the hearing path to a purchase. And what you have to know is that people think about making an appointment with you long before they ever do that. And what goes on in their minds as they're thinking about making an appointment and possibly doing something about their hearing problem. Care Credit's done some great research just recently that says the average patient, 97 days, they think about making an appointment before they actually make the decision to do that. 61% of patients, they use credit when they purchased hearing aids, and the average price they spent was twelve fifty six. So this is just a little bit of an insight into the minds of our patients. These kind of data can help us do a better job at attracting patients. So how do patients get information about you and about better hearing in general? Well, the recent research that Care Credit did showed that 82% do some research, sometimes they look into the office, they look into what the office charges, but 27% actually ask the provider about financing before they made that appointment. That's really significant. So it's important that you offer the financing, A, and that the person answering your phone, if it's not yourself, knows what to say. And actually 25% researched the providers before they went, and 9% 
got the financing and had it secured before they even came to their appointment. 56% spoke with friends and family, which that's so important. That's why I'm going to tell you a little bit later about our very successful patient referral program. And 67% of patients sought research online before they made an appointment and chose their hearing health care provider. They researched cost. That's a big factor. And what kind of financing that you offer. So if you're going to offer financing, I certainly would recommend that you do that and that you post information about your financing programs online on your websites. And obviously you want to advertise that you're offering financing on some of your marketing materials because it does make a difference on what provider that patients choose before they make an appointment. So what kind of marketing should you do? What's the best, especially for those boomers that we're all trying to attract into our practices? Well, one of the things is television. You know, seniors still watch television. But the thing that we've found about marketing on television is, A, it can be very expensive, so you want to choose your times wisely. So we found that by only running ads during our open hours in the practice, so we never run them at night, we need to run those ads when patients can pick up the phone and immediately call for an appointment. We found that that increases at least threefold the response that we get from TV advertising if patients can pick up the phone right now and impulsively make an appointment. And then you want to try to get them in within 48 hours so that they don't change their mind. Another thing that we've found is we've used direct mail for years. Direct mail is sending some kind of advertisement, so to speak, to the mass public. Usually the response is about half of 1%, so you have to send a lot of them for people to respond. And the trend on direct mail seems to be going down, that not as many seniors or boomers really pay much attention to direct mail. And that could well be because they get so darn much of it, right? Um, haven't you ever had a patient that came in with a whole bag full of things and said, I just wanted you to know what your competition is sending me because they get a lot of it. So you want to make sure that it's effective. But usually we just use direct mail as one part of our external marketing campaign. Of course, a great way to market to prospective patients is on the web. And some of the research that's come out is that 84% of boomers and seniors get information on the web before they ever make an appointment. So you want to make sure you have a presence, that you have a good website, that you come up on the search engine optimization, that your practice comes up first or especially on that very first page. You definitely have to be online today to really make an impact with marketing. Another part of our external marketing campaign and our layered marketing approach is Facebook. Uh, for one thing, Facebook can be very inexpensive. Seventy percent of boomers use Facebook today. And it helps develop an identity that people can see without coming into practice. You can post pictures. And it's a good way for people to start sharing information about you, a great way and a great place to post testimonials from your current patients. And prospective patients do get an impression about your practice by looking at your Facebook, just like they get an impression about you by looking at your Facebook. So you really have to do it all. You have to employ a great number of resources to get anybody to pay attention to you today. Just think about boomers and how many marketing messages they get every single day. It's hundreds. It's thousands, actually, of marketing messages every single day. So we employ many different mediums to get our message out there, and we do it all at once. We take all of our marketing dollars, and we put it all into one week of marketing. Now, I'm not saying this will work for everyone. I'm just telling you that it's been working for us and has brought our cost per call down. Another great way to market to prospective patients is email marketing. Number one, it's underutilized. People don't get as many messages via email as they do via snail mail or via the newspaper and print, things like that. So it's underutilized and it's also less costly than direct mail. And you can use a variety of resources to send out email marketing. And most of the time, though, you have to have some way that patients can opt out so that if they don't want to receive any more of your messages. But it's a great way to get a message out to your prospects and also to your patients in a very short amount of time. So that's external marketing and just some of the ways that you can reach prospects. 
Now we're going to talk about internal marketing because it's also part of the campaign. You know, I'm amazed that more than 40% of practices and hearing healthcare professionals don't schedule any kind of follow-up with their patients at all. They work with them, perhaps they dispense amplification to them, and then there's no follow-up at all. They just hope and pray the patient comes back. Well, you know, when you think about that patients are living longer, you really want to market to those patients and to let them know that you're there and you care about them and you really want to keep their business because it's a great way of getting future business. In our practice, and I think it's pretty typical across the country if you've been in business for any length of time, at least especially for over four or five years, that we get about 65% of our patients, of our business, from our current patients and 35% from new patients. So it definitely is a great way to boost revenue, and you want to keep your patients connected to you for a very long time. How do you do that? Well, one of the ways is by sending newsletters. You can send email newsletters and print newsletters. You can do four times a year we do what we call an upgrade program where we have our patients coming back. We send them a letter with a handwritten note on the bottom that says we have some great technology we think that they would really benefit from, and we're having a special event. Please make an appointment because we really want to show you this new technology. We do it four times a year. We send it to patients that have AIDS over three years old, and we found it to be a great boon for business. I have a story about never judging a person's ability to consume. I had a patient come in who's done a lot of business with me, he and his wife, over the past 20 years. He's getting elderly now. He came in just to tell me that he was never doing business with me again, not because he didn't like me and care about me and appreciate the services, but he was running out of money. So I said, I certainly understood that. We'll do whatever we can to keep your hearing aids working as long as we can. We were doing an up- upgrade program about a month later, and his name was on the list. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, how did I miss that? I thought, oh, here I go, another half an hour to tell me he's never doing business with me again. So he came in, and we had... A representative from a manufacturer here. He demoed the technology and he wanted to take it home for a couple of days, which because he was our current patient, because I truly thought he wasn't going to do anything, I, of course I let him take it home. And he came back the next day with a check in hand and said, I need you to do me a favor. Please convince my wife to get this too. So upgrades work. If you're not telling your patients about the latest technology, look around. Everybody else is. We also do special events just for our patients. When we come back from a seminar or when there's new technology available, we will send a letter about being in a focus group and ask our current patients and offer them to be the first to try something new. And it's great, and patients appreciate it because everybody wants to hear better. Another way of really marketing internally is you need to build relationships with your patients. Patients can be your best advocates. They tell everybody else, people that are happy, we know, Tell less people than people that are unhappy, so you better have a big group of people explaining to others how valuable you are, your services, how happy they are with you and your staff, and that you're the one to provide hearing health care services to them. So you need to spread that message, and the best way is to get your patients to feel like family. You know, everybody has a crazy family member. No, I'm not that one in my family, believe it or not, but family stays with family. So do whatever you can if you can send special cards to your patients on birthdays and anniversaries, if you let them know if they have a significant accomplishment in their life that you noticed. You need to build those relationships because building relationships will make patients come back for a lifetime, and that's exactly what you want. We now get 70% of our new business from our patient referral program. Our patient referral program is a very intentional part of our layered marketing approach. If you say to somebody, let's have lunch sometime, chances are that's never going to happen. But if you say, let's have lunch next Tuesday, it probably will. So it has to be an intentional and very well thought out and very active part of your marketing program. Each one in our organization puts five referral cards in their pocket every day. The cards are dated no more than one month out with an expiration so that people can't put those cards in their pocket for months at a time. They need to give them out now. And what we do is we say to a patient, especially the best time to say it is when they're very satisfied if you've repaired something or when they have new aids and they're hearing very well, you say, I'm so happy for you. Now I'd like you to do something for me. The 
best way that we get new business is from our patient referral program, and we would like you to be a part of that program. So please take these two cards and hand them out to your friends or your family this week because we know you want us to be in business for a long time, and this is the best way for us to get new business. Most people wait six to eight years before they actually make an appointment. So please hand these out this week. And most patients say, oh, we're happy to do that, happy to do that. We have the cards that are a little bigger than average, so they can't just stick them in their wallet or in their purse, so they know they should hand them out now. This is a copy of our referral cards. We try to put some cute pictures on them, and then on the back we do offer free screenings to the patient that receives the card that has a value on it. So we ask the patient to put their name on it so we can send them a thank you with an expiration date that's, like I said, no more than one month out because you need to create that sense of urgency so they don't just put them away forever. What we found with our patient referral program is that it was costing us a fortune in advertising to get a new patient. This $662 per aid is honest. We've brought that down now to less than $300, but it is expensive to get new patients, and so the patient referral program is a much more efficient and effective way of getting new patients because we found that patient referrals cost us 10% of what it costs to get a new patient through advertising and marketing. So it's, it's very much an efficient way of getting new patients. We also found something else, that patients who were referred from other patients actually spent more. They were coming because they knew about us, they knew about the benefits of better hearing, and they wanted to hear better. We found that our help rate was higher and patients invested more in their hearing aid technology because one of their friends or family had told them about us and the benefits of better hearing. So the multi-layered approach, marketing can be very not only expensive but very complicated. And so the approach involves external marketing, getting new patients, by marketing to the mass audience that doesn't know about you, internal marketing, increasing the amount of business that you get from your current patients, and our patient referral program. Thanks to this approach to marketing, our business this year is up 16% in the first quarter, and that's in a town of 10,000 after being in business for over 30 years. So I'd like to believe that people would come to us if we didn't market, but I don't think that's true, and I don't find that's true over all these years. If you want people to come, you need to constantly be telling them about you. So use the multi-layered approach to marketing to increase your business from new patients, and it'll be a boon for you, just like it's been for us. You may know that I have a very active presence in social media, so I ask you to connect with me either by checking out my blog at drjill.com or tweeting at Jill Caseworm, or on Facebook, drjill.com. I have some new and exciting things to come, so I hope you'll follow me so you will know about those as soon as they happen. And once again, I want to thank Carl and the great people at Hearing Review and Care Credit for allowing me to do this seminar. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jill. That was terrific information. If you have questions for Dr. Caseworm, you can email her at the email address shown here. As I mentioned before, Care Credit is also offering a free toolkit, as well as a summary of the information contained in this webinar at its booth, booth number 308, at the 2015 IHS convention in Orlando. So please stop by and pick up this material if you're attending the convention. They will also be offering a different series of webinars and the toolkit in advance of the 2015 ADA convention, so stay tuned for that. I'd like to thank Dr. Jill Caseworm and Care Credit for their participation in this webinar, and also Hearing Review staff members Dana McLean, Courtney Riley, and Ashley Lawson for their help in producing it. For the Hearing Review, I'm Carl Strum.